Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the top 10 arc tames to look forward to in ASA. I all do know that you can get these tames already through ASA but their maps haven't been released yet so that's how I'm doing this list. Anyway, let's get into it. In at number 10 I've decided to put the Velonosaur and I really do love this as an arc creature. I love its concept and I love how it was kind of outputted into the final game i just love what podcast really did with the creature and obviously extinction is still not going to be in asa for a while you've got the center first then aberration will probably be one of the next things sorry aberration always get that wrong i need to re rewire my brain at some point to say aberration and not aberration but at this point i've been saying it for so many years i keep forgetting but yes extinction is definitely not close around the corner but still it will come out within the next year or so at least i'm hoping and this will be a really nice thing to see in our and i'm sure extinction is going to look amazing when it comes out on asa already scorched earth and the island look really good scorched earth especially over the island the island's got a few issues with it still but compared to scorched earth scorched earth is doing leagues leagues and leagues ahead of what the island has so hopefully the center continues that trend and i'm sure extinction aberration are gonna be really great going to the future as well and i just really love this creature's abilities i find it to be really useful as well easy one to tame too and i can't wait to see it in asa next up we have got the snow owl and this creature is here because come on don't we all love a little bit of snow owl in our arc lives it is just so good as a creature and again coming from the extinction map you can get it on fielder as well but that's going to be even further into the future compared to extinction so extinction is going to be the map that we see the snow owl on first the model obviously isn't going to be different it's mainly the map around it but it's still going to be just as useful they obviously do have that dive bomb ability although they can't deal any damage with it, it is still used as a form of agility for them and they can get around with some significant speed yes maybe not quite as fast as the griffin but arguably i find this just to be a much better cr creature than the griffin anyway so that doesn't really bother me they also do have a kind of infrared ability where you can see any creature around you that will give off any kind of heat which as far as i'm concerned is all of the organisms that you'll find within the game and this is useful for any given pvp or pve scenario where you need to find a given organism that being a player or a small creature or just one of your own tank creatures you can even use it like night vision you also want to pump that stamina because they can heal creatures too by freezing them in place then it will heal them and the more stamina you have the longer it can heal up those creatures for it doesn't matter what they are be it your own be it enemy creatures or be it wild ones very useful if you're taming something let's just say a giga in this instance and you've got its health down really low probably won't happen but still uh, you can just freeze it, heal it up with this thing, and then keep tranking it instead of having to wait for absolutely ages for it to heal up. Because that is something which we all really don't want to do. And uh, with this creature, you don't have to do that anymore. Of course, also, the snarl pellets are very useful with gatches as well. You can get some insane loot out of them. And all round, they're just really good tames. Very easy knockout one, so there's no brain to get one. And I can't wait to see this thing in ASA as well. Next up, we've got the Astrodelphus. And I really do like this creature from Gen 2, so it definitely is actually going to be a while until we see it in ASA because Gen 2 is a bit further along in the pipeline, but that doesn't really matter. Either way, getting back to what I was saying, I really do like this creature. I like its ability and agility. It's just so fun to ride around on and you can really get places with it. And if you think, well, all the element is just really expensive. The amount of element that you can get on Gen 2 is absolutely insane and you'll have no issues at all and also on extinction you can get quite a significant amount of element too and that map will already be accessible so i'm sure especially if you're doing transfers or you're on like a cluster server and you're going between maps you already have sufficient element anyway and the saddle level can be a little bit tricky but it shouldn't be too much of an issue if you just put the effort in to actually go up to that high of a level i'm pretty sure you're going to need to defeat some bosses and get some ascensions to actually be able to unlock the saddle the tropio is a great other creature to look forward to in asa though if 
the Astrodelphus isn't what you're looking after and I find that that creature will be good as well and I'm definitely looking forward to it so I guess it gets a brief honorable mention here but yes it's just a really fast agile fly that can get around and it also can deal some damage as well like the Tropio so this one shoots lasers and that other one shoots grenades and it runs on gasoline whereas the Astrodelphus runs on elements apart from that they're pretty much the same thing really okay, at number seven I've decided to put the crystal wyvern as I find that this is something which I can't wait to be an ASA obviously wyverns are just going to be a really cool integration to the game but this is really going to add to it for me as I love this as a general creature considering just how easy they are to tame it is just insane that people don't talk about these things as much as I do I always feel like the wyverns get a little bit too much credit for what it's worth when you factor in the crystal wyverns and they are significantly easier to tame which is why I put them in as just being a better tame and that is why I look forward to them so much but obviously the wyverns as well and I guess a brief honorable mention is probably deserved and it's not like they're useless they are still very good creatures in their own right but with a passive tame as easy as this one the only real difficulty being that you have to knock out crystal wyvern to get some primal crystal in the first place and obviously you have to be level 60 as well but no runs really aren't particularly difficult and knocking out one of these things can be easily done especially with the assistance of a net gun or a basic trap it really is not going to cause you all too much difficulty and I find with that it's just so simple to tame and a blood crystal wyvern is my all time favourite but I know those of you out there really like the ember crystal wyvern and I could agree with you there that is a very nice wyvern too all really great tames from the crystal wyvern family and when they're this easy to tame and you get yourself the full wyvern experience if not better because I find the elemental abilities are more useful it is a no brainer and I really really can't wait for these things to be an ASA and I find as maybe more of these creatures are in the game because of what maps are out I like the game even more rock drake another aberration tame finally said it right for once is a creature which i'm sure we're all really looking forward to when it comes to asa obviously aberration like i've said before is going to come up relatively soon in the scheme of asa in terms of just when maps are going to release as it isn't too far on you can still probably expect to wait at the most a year i'm gonna say for it weird way of phrasing it but either way at the most a year and then this thing will probably very comfortably be in the game and i can't wait to start using this creature again in asa obviously i use it a lot just generally all the time and especially when i was playing operation that was a really hit creature for me sorry aberration said it wrong again i'll get there eventually i promise yes they are just so good for travel on that map they can't be undermined for it and also they're great on gen 1 as well i find through the bog biome they could be quite an effective traveler people don't give them enough credit for that but they really really do extremely well from all that i've gathered in using them there and the bloodstalker does very well as uh, too and you know that's a creature which i can't wait to be an asa as well i'll give it a brief honorable mention here as i haven't actually Put it on the list and i would put it a lot higher i just you know i think these other creatures will be a lot more popular with you guys as well and the blood socket isn't widely used for what i really like it for but i would probably put it around the number two or number three spot for my preference but it's not on the list but i'll give it an honorable mention and i'm saying if that is a creature that you really like for the use of underwater travel then for this list i put it in the number three number two spot that's about where i do it for all these creatures on the list but i find that these ones are probably gonna resonate with you maybe a little bit more at yeah, number five continuing the aberration theme i've decided to put the reaper on the list and i know all of you really do love this creature and i definitely thoroughly enjoy it as well as a tame and it is going to be so so great honestly aberration is one of the most atmospheric maps out there and with a creature like this being in it it's going to add and with the graphics of asa it is going to look so well uh, so great sorry and i actually do wonder about the performance is it going to be significantly better improved or is it also just going to perform quite rubbishly as you do find with maps like this on arp they do perform just a little bit worse in a lot of cases that's probably down to my cpu at the moment why i'm getting a few performance drops in the game because i think a 3090 is quite comparable especially considering i've got the fsr 3 frame generation mod on so i am still using frame generation within the game of asa as well but i'm just talking about ase here a 3090 is definitely sufficient i'm pretty much cranking the game to full and i could easily get 60 if i wanted to but you know a good cpu is really up there for me to get in the future i've only got a 
3800X, a Ryzen 7 3800X, but I'm thinking of maybe a 5900X or a 78-7900X going to the future, but we'll see how this year pans out, shall we? Yes, this is a really atmospheric creature, does a lot of damage, it's got great abilities, and I just love it as a creature, can't wait for it to be in ASA. And number four, we have got the Desmodus, and this, again, it's not going to be in the game for a while, because uh, the order's a long way down the pipeline, to say the least, like the most recent map that came out to Ark, so, you know, it makes sense a little bit, doesn't it? Either way, with a creature like this, it is just such a good one for my ASE playing. It is... The same Terry method as a Bloodstalker, you just uh, get blood bags in the inventory, it's going to uh, take it out of it. And obviously this doesn't need a saddle, which I'm pretty sure the Bloodstalker doesn't if I'm confident on that. I don't know why I actually am saying that, because the Bloodstalker definitely does not need a saddle. But the main thing that this creature does for me is that it's an elixir, instant dope sent to the, the knockout team done like that. Just boom. And I'm not sure if you can do it past turns, I haven't actually tried it, but you might just be able to click E that first feed and 30% of it's done like that but either way that's a great thing for me to have and they also can farm blood bags too they're great gliders as a general creature well obviously they are flyers but they have that dive bombing ability they can go invisible at the night as well but because i was in the wrong biome for this i couldn't test that out for the b-roll but yeah really great creatures then number three i've decided to put the may wing and this is obviously again going to be quite far down because gen 2 is a long way away in the pipeline of maps to come out but either way this is like the best glider and travel mount out there obviously you can still use it in asa at the moment but i'm talking of when that map officially does release for these creatures the main map that they originally released with because that's how i'm judging this list like i said in the introduction to this video but they are just so good at gliding and flying and they can be unlocked at level 18 because that's the saddle level probably want to be level 21 though because with trank arrows it's much easier to get a significantly higher level one just put some signs down trank these guys out and then that saddle you should be able to craft with relative ease not really expensive and then boom you've got yourself the best glider in the game it is absolutely insane how easy these things are to tame which is why i look forward to them being in asa so much as they are just so good and so useful to use all around they also do act as a portable feeding trough as well which is just generally really nice and i enjoy that for when i'm doing breeding or maybe getting some mutations onto creatures the gigantoraptor's a good one as well but obviously that is already in asa and isn't in ase so it's an only ASA thing. They can also gather berries as well, and they're pretty good swimmers. Then number two, I'm putting the Shadow Mane, and this is where I put the Bloodstalker as well. Like I was saying when I was talking about the Rock Drake, you know, this is where I would actually put it. Not even the number three spot, in the number two spot, but the Shadow Mane is going to be the main creature here, as it is just packed full of abilities. Again, a Gen 2 creature, so it's going to be a while, but that's besides the point. I guess you've got more time to enjoy the wait and really anticipate how good it's going to feel when this creature is actually into the game. There's actually something to be said for that. They have an incredible amount of mobility though. They can jump to great heights and get around with absolute ease. You'll find no issues with the traveling abilities of these creatures. On top of that, they do have the hydration buff as well. They have the pack buff, making them really great for boss fights too. And they have natural armor, obviously with no saddle, which is unlike the wyvern, which has no natural armor and not a saddle. They're also really Really great swimmers as well and they actually can be used for the mode of boss fight which is also not in ASA because um you know gen 1's still not in the game yet and it still won't be for quite a bit actually I'm pretty sure no gen 1 creatures on this list apart from the bloodstalker but anyway let's continue to the spot number one and in number one probably like my favorite arc tame really out there is the Deinonychus I love this creature to death and I just can't wait for it to be in ASA not actually sure when Valguero is on uh, is in it's going to be implemented into ASA it's in the pipeline somewhere I'm pretty sure it's not as far as uh, gen 1 and gen 2 it might be after extinction or before extinction i'm kind of putting it around that spot so maybe year and a half two years at most i'm saying until this creature's in the game again i've completely forgotten the pipeline i might as well just chuck it up on screen right now if you do want some reference of what i am talking about or trying to recite over but either way they spawn in valguera only valguera in the uh, chalk cliffs, at least I think they're called chalk cliffs. I was going to say crystal cliffs, but that's 
That's a completely different thing. I'm pretty sure it's not even on Crystal Isles that. Yes, Chalk Cliff Spime in Valguero. They have the pack buff. Essentially, essentially what you do to tame one is you get the egg out the nest that they have and then you'll want to escape because all those Dynamicus are going to aggro onto you and then it's going to raise it and then boom, you've got yourself Dynamicus. They've got the pack buff. They take no fall damage. They are great for doing all kinds of parkour and things like that. They're great for bosses as well as they can deal bleed damage to them. Obviously, they can grapple onto them and just tear them to shreds with that bleed damage ability. It is really insane what they can do. They can climb any kind of wall or vertical surface as well as they are just insane. Just insane creatures for doing all of this stuff and that is why I just merit them so much as creatures and it's why I really do look forward to them the most out of any creature in Ark to be in ASA. But anyway, that is the end of today's video. I really hope that you all have enjoyed as I've definitely enjoyed making this one. As always, comment down below what arc tame are you most looking forward to in ASA and if you didn't agree with this, then put your 10 down below and I'll see you all later.